Hey everybody, Dr. Tucker here from Active Family and Sports Chiropractic, continuing on our series where I'm talking about the top five conditions that I treat with acupuncture. Um, last week we talked about headaches and I demonstrated some of the self-care points that you can do at home, which are also points that we needle here in the office when people are coming in with headaches or migraines. But those are some of those pressure points that are good for you to stimulate on your own. So in case you didn't catch that video, go back um, and look last week for the acupuncture series video on headaches. So today I'm talking about um, the number two thing that I see most often are neurological disorders. So this is sort of a big um, component or a big category of things to think about as far as what acupuncture can help with. Um, so I'm going to break down a few of those and talk about a few cases that I have seen over the years. So um, what are neurological disorders? So these could be something as serious as an actual disorder or disease that's happening where something's actually happening to the nerves themselves or starting to break down. Or this could be as simple as someone is having nerve pain because of inflammation or impingement somewhere along the nervous system. So a few cases that I have seen over the years that have really responded well to acupuncture, um, including scar therapy, so someone who has chronic pain uh, related to an injury and, um, and possibly to a scar that has formed or scar tissue that has formed. Um, I've had a case before where someone was experiencing pain for over a decade um, in a scar and it was debilitating, I mean, bothering them, you know, on an everyday basis and even exacerbating to the level of having to miss work frequently. Um, and within less than like five or six sessions of acupuncture, um, all the pain had been eliminated and had increased function. So that's one thing. Um, we think about chronic pain. Chronic pain comes from a multitude of different factors, but a lot of time it does originate in the soft tissues. So what is acupuncture doing whenever the needle goes in? The way I like to explain it to patients when they're experiencing nerve pain or a nerve condition is there are little tiny... Um, sensors within your skin over your entire body um, and so whenever you are stimulating those little sensors what you're doing is essentially sending a signal back up to your brain and what we're trying to do is essentially override the pain signals that your brain has been used to receiving so when we use the acupuncture needle and I'm going to show you one once again of course hard to see because they're so small there you go Got a little shiny part there um, the length that they go in depends on what we're needling. So if we're needling something like a muscle itself, um, you know, in the arm or the leg, the needle can go in a lot further than if we're obviously needling something like the face. So, hey there, I see you watching. <laughs> um, so if you are watching, go ahead and pop in a comment. Um, or if you're watching on the replay, let me know that as well. Um, but what we're doing when we stick that needle in is we are sending off all those mechanoreceptors within the skin or the tissue itself to try to override those pain signals. So, um, you know, in and around a scar um, or just around the nerve distribution itself. So one condition um, that I get asked about a lot is Bell's palsy or trigeminal neuralgia, two conditions that happen to nerves of the face. Um, one is more of a sensory condition where it is um, associated with altered sensation and a lot of pain. The other one is more a um, muscle function or a motor function of the nerve um, where the muscles of the face are paralyzed and so you get this drooping effect. So I have successfully treated um, both of those conditions with acupuncture. Um, the sooner the better is um, with those conditions that as soon as it the onset occurs, it is better to get the acupuncture sooner rather than later because once it turns chronic, um, it becomes a little bit harder to manage. So the benefits are um, better in the beginning. Um, a couple other neurological conditions that I have seen over the years. Um, I've had a few cases of um, a condition where the sympathetic nervous system is ramped up too high and this can happen after an injury or after a surgery. 
Um, and so where you get these sort of at random flare-ups of the nerves and it, the pain can be very debilitating. So in these cases, we do a trial of care where we might actually be doing the needling itself in that area. Sometimes we have to go to the opposite area because that area is too sensitive. So we may go to the opposite side, say if the pain is in knee and we can't needle that side, we'll needle the other leg or the other knee just to send those signals back up to the brain. There's also a method in acupuncture where you um, also cross the other side of the body and the other limb. So if someone has knee pain and we can't needle the knee or they're not responding with knee pain, we'll actually go to the opposite side of the body and to the opposite joint, which is the elbow. So a little bit of a foreign concept there. Um, we, I almost always start with the area of complaint and see how the body responds to that. And most of the time it's very favorable. Um, in acupuncture, there also exists a, what are called microsystems. So you see on the charts behind me, there's a microsystem in the hand. There's also a microsystem in the ear. Um, a lot of people have heard of reflexology, and that's essentially another microsystem where there's a representation of the body on the bottom of the foot itself. So reflexologists will use pressure points and a type of massage that will um, be stimulating those certain areas of the body for their key indicators that go back to the internal organs. So the same thing exists in the hands. Um, there's different points on the hands for the immune system, um, just for different areas of the body. The different joints in the fingers can correlate to different joints in the body, and so we can use those um, to help impact arthritis-type pain, um, or just arthritis pain itself within the hands responds very well um, to acupuncture. In the ear, we use the ear um, points a lot, or I use the ear points a lot when we're dealing with emotional disorders um, and stress, um, because obviously stress can impact your emotions a lot. Um, there's also protocols for addiction there. So uh, whether it's addiction to food or sugar, um, or to a certain chemical dependency, or even tobacco, there are protocols and points um, in the auricular therapy system to help to treat those. So. Um, I hope this answered your questions. Um, as far as self-care for some of these conditions, I always advocate that people um, try to stimulate these acupuncture points um, within those systems, even on their own, even if they don't have access necessarily to needling or that sort of thing. So especially in the ear, um, and I recommend this for kids. A good relaxation technique is actually just rubbing the ear itself all over the ear, no point in particular. Um, but a lot of people just don't touch their ears, you know, usually throughout the day, and especially kids. Um, you know, their ears just aren't really stimulated, and there's just a lot of sensory input um, besides hearing, the special sense of hearing, that goes on in the ear. So I um, encourage people to, um, you know, vigorously sort of massage the ears and just try to wake wake everything up. And this can be done preventatively, it can be done in the morning, it can be done before bed as a relaxation technique, um, or just in times of stress um, to help kind of reset your body and um, you know kind of get your mind off of whatever it is that the stressful situation is. Um, also, when we're talking about scars, chronic nerve pain, that sort of thing, you know, doing some self-massage, say you had a scar here in your hand, or somewhere on your leg, doing some self-massage as tolerated around that scar can help to mobilize the tissue and, and encourage lymph flow. Um, and I think overall it's just really important to, if you're having an area of pain, to get it checked out because chances are, um, you know, your body is trying to send you a signal. Pain is a signal, it is not a normal occurrence. Um, so it's your body's way of trying to bring attention to something that needs to be taken care of. So we do those things conservatively here in our office. We are primarily a chiropractic office, but I also do practice acupuncture and we do a lot of nutrition work with our patients. So um, one thing, um, especially for neurological conditions like carpal tunnel, um, where, you know, here are the carpals are the wrist bones where those start to get clamped down and it affects symptoms that go on in the hands. So it can be tingling, it can be weakness. Um, a lot of times this is an ergonomical thing. So it happens um, from, you know, people who sit at a desk for a long period of time or possibly their wrists are, you know, brought back and stretched for a long period of time. And so there's just an imbalance in the tissues, the muscles of the forearms, etc. So acupuncture can help with that, but chiropractic, ergonomic, 
um, considerations are typically what we do for those as well. Splinting can also help. Um, but along those lines, supplements can also help too. So B vitamins are very good for nerve health as well as essential fatty acids because your nerves are protected um, in a layer of fat. And so those nerve transmissions um, go a lot.